What is the identity of Jesus? Our scripture is from John chapter 2, verses 13 through 22. I invite you to hear this word. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. The disciples remembered that, he, that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and will you raise it up in three days? After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said, these, said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. The identity of Jesus is unique in the Gospel of John. It's 90% of what is written in the Gospel of John is not found in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, or Luke. In these three Gospels, often called the Synoptic Gospels because they carry similar messages about Jesus, Jesus' Jesus identity is revealed through the course of his ministry at certain turning points in his ministry such as Jesus being baptized in the Jordan by John the Baptist, Jesus being tempted in the wilderness by the devil, Jesus being followed by his disciples, Jesus being seen in God's glory on the Mount of Transfiguration, Jesus being confessed as the Messiah by Peter, Jesus being denied and forsaken by his disciples after he was arrested, Jesus' crucifixion, his death on the cross, his burial, and his being raised from the dead. Ultimately, the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke identify Jesus as God's Son through different witnesses at the cross. For example, Mark chapter 15, verse 39 reads, Now when the centurions who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was God's son. Matthew chapter 27 verse 54 states, Now when the centurion and those with him were, who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, Truly, this man was God's son. Luke chapter 23, verse 42, reports that one of the thieves with whom Jesus was crucified said to him, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. The Gospel of John is different from the other Gospels. Rather than Jesus' identity as the Son of God being affirmed at the conclusion of his ministry as he is being crucified on the cross, in the Gospel of John, Jesus is identified as God's Son in the first chapter, the 34th verse, even before he begins his ministry. As John the Baptist states, I myself have seen and have testified that this is the Son of God. The identity of Jesus. The Gospel of John is unique in how Jesus is identified. Take, for example, today's scripture reading from John chapter 2, verses 13 through 22, where Jesus cleanses the temple of the money changers who were making financial gains through the extortion of the poor who came to the temple to offer sacrifices. In John, the story of Jesus' cleansing of the temple is told at the beginning of his ministry following his first miracle of turning water into wine. It's in John 
that the story of Jesus cleansing the temple is told at the beginning of his ministry, while in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, the story of Jesus cleansing the temple is told near the end of his ministry on Palm Sunday, as after entering to Jerusalem, he goes into the temple and cleanses it. Well, what is the message about the identity of Jesus that John is telling in the story of Jesus cleansing the temple? Why is it that John tells this at the beginning of Jesus' ministry? And Matthew, Mark, and Luke include the story of the cleansing of the temple near the end of Jesus' ministry. Well, perhaps it's because they are all sharing the same message about the identity of Jesus and about our identity as disciples of Jesus. Perhaps they're sharing the same message so that we might remember that it is Jesus' identity that defines our identity. Reverend Philip Martin shares these reflections about what it means to live as Jesus' identity defines our identity. I invite you to hear what he states. If we're listening, we notice that this scene in the temple isn't just about another message that someone trying to get across. It is not a message about overturning a system of manipulative religion. The message is Jesus himself. Jesus doesn't just come like other prophets before him, bearing the message of God's forgiveness for sin. Jesus becomes the forgiveness of sin. Jesus is not talking about the stone temple. Jesus is talking about his very body itself. So in Jesus, the message is not simply about getting across God's forgiveness and, John, and, the, and the story of the cleansing of the temple. The message is this, is that we are brought into God's presence because of the cross of Jesus. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 18 through 25, talks about the message of the cross and the identity we have as followers of Jesus. It is understood that while the cross may seem foolish or weak, it is in the cross that we find the strength of our identity as followers of Jesus. So that whether the cleansing of the temples is at the beginning of Jesus' ministry or at the end, the message is the same. The message is, is that God's love is a message of forgiveness. This is our identity that we seek to, to which we seek to bear witness today. Our identity is as forgiven people, people whom God values, people who find our identity in Jesus. Pastor Brian Chapel writes in his recent book, Grace at Work, about a friend of his who's a marathon runner. If you've ever been to a marathon race, you know that as you get nearer the end of the race, that there are people who are standing, cheering you, exhorting you on. They'll call out your name, say, you can do it. Keep going. Keep going, Mark. Keep running. You can do it. Well, Brian tells about a friend of his who was in a race a few years ago that he knew would be tough, particularly at the end. And so knowing what would happen as people would be encouraging him, this friend did not put his own name on his racing bib, but instead wrote the word Christian. He knew when he got to that final part of the race, and as all the people were cheering, they wouldn't call out his name, but instead they would call out Christian. Go get him, Christian. You can do it, Christian. 
Hang in there, Christian. His friend knew that it was in the identity of Christian that he would find strength to finish the race. Why did Jesus cleanse the temple? Why do all four Gospels carry the same message, although it might be at different times? I think the reason why is because they know that the identity of Jesus is revealed in the cleansing of the temple. And they know that the message, whether it's at the beginning of Jesus' ministry or at the end of Jesus' ministry, is the same, is that our identity as followers of Jesus is defined by Jesus himself. Our identity is defined as we look to the cross and as we hear Jesus calling out to us. Jesus' identity, it is what identifies us as we seek to follow our Savior. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. Amen. Dear God, grant that as we run the race of faith, we may be strengthened by the identity of Jesus and that we might be able, O oh God, to speak on behalf of those who have no voice as we receive the name of Christian this day. In Jesus, whose name we pray, amen. Well, friends, may God bless you through Jesus, in whose name we worship and pray. Amen. <laughs>